Hey everybody, what's going on? Hexlex here with another Master Duel video. I'm very excited for today's video because for the first time on the channel, I'm actually joined by a guest today. Uh, and not just any guest, our guest was a top four finisher uh, for the inaugural week of the Master Circuit series this past weekend. And is honestly one of the best, probably just the best, had a Mr. player I personally watched played. Uh, please join me in welcoming, uh, I wish I was dead to the channel, welcome. I am so sorry you have to have me on your channel, but I, <laughs> uh, I, I'm here to explain my horrible choices uh, for getting to top four. <laughs> right on. Well, I'm I'm thrilled personally because uh, b between you and me, honestly, adding Mister is I think one of the coolest decks you can play right now. So you're pretty cool in my book. <laughs> um, and also, there is that I feel like every time I see like a thread or a post about the tournament this weekend, um, one of the top comments is always uh, about your game three in the top eight match. So after I saw that game, after I watched it, I knew I had to have you on. Uh, Attic Mister has like a, a lot of strengths in this meta just because it has a good branded matchup. Mm. It has a good uh, Sword Soul matchup. Uh, unfortunately, Math Mech is almost a die roll of who goes first. Because if you go first, you're unbeatable. But if they go first, you have to see one of the outs to Super Factorial or have enough starters to play through a Super Factorial. Right, right. Makes sense. So, uh, was that kind of what made you decide to play adding Nister in the tournament? Was just its overall strength against? Um, I'm, I'm guessing, you know, uh, like a lot of us were expecting a lot of Sword Soul. Was that kind of the incentive for you there? Uh, that that was a, one of the larger incentives. Mm -hmm. There was a few others. Um, I really, really hate bricking and <laughs> Math Mech and Ignister. They have, they can run fifteen to eighteen starters. Mm -hmm. uh, just so you always have like an upper 96% consistency of just going first because in a best of one format you don't want to brick and because if you brick it in the first game you're in that means you have to win every other game in order to not uh, to get to top cut right right uh, another huge thing is I wanted a deck that could play through the max C challenge mm. uh, in the sense of like I could let them draw 20 cards because they're not their most decks don't have an out to the arrival uh at ignister like sword soul doesn't uh and it doesn't as long as you're making the 6k a, a lot of math mech lists they can't even out a 6k at, at ignister because they cypher lock themselves and mm. so the only way they could get over is make an apo somehow sit on the apo for a turn and then use that apo for an access code talker that's over 6200 but then you can just negate it with dan mari and right right yeah no I, um, I found myself thinking the same thing as i was watching your matches and you were getting out those the 6k arrival side bursts. i was like ooh, I, I would not have had a way to stop that so yeah it definitely seems like it was a great meta call um yeah no i'll definitely i'll give you the floor here just to talk about your build overall um please go right ahead uh, sure. Uh, so we run a standard lineup of three of the yellow uh, jelly bean Picari, three <laughs> of the red jelly bean uh, Chi Chi, mm -hmm. uh, just because they're starters. Uh, we're running uh, for other Attic Nisters, you need to run Doyon uh, Baruru uh, to do the full combo line. Mm -hmm. uh, for it, Attic Nister's outside that. Uh, Dan Mari is good for when you're doing arrival setups, but you don't want to see it if you're trying to like break a board going second. Mm -hmm. It is the only garnet of the deck, because once it's in your hand, the only way to get rid of it is like a sign net mining or a droplet or tribute summon it, which ha uh, does happen. <laughs> um, Et Shiri... Adagnister is very, very powerful because it is searchable off of AI Meet You and or the uh, the blue jelly bean Hyari. Mm -hmm. And just his all of his effects matter in the sense of the first time a cyber you cook control would be destroyed by a card effect, it's just not destroyed. So that can help you a lot playing through branded setups or runic has a very hard time 
healing, they have to spend two removal spells just to get rid of this guy. Oh, yeah. Because he can protect your whole entire board. Because if you can go normal summon, for example, Pakari, add AI meet you, you can then search uh, uh, Gacha, and then you can summon him negating your own Pakari, and now they have to spend two runic interactions with your monsters in order to actually do anything else. And then uh, for math mechs, oh, sorry, we also are running one Hirari Adagnister. Um, the other top four build did not run this card. I like it because it means you can search uh, Gachiri from a Chi-Chi as well, because a Chi-Chi only adds level four or lower Adagnisters from your deck to your hand. Right, yeah. So, uh, in order to get to, for both of your normals to have that ability, you need to run the blue one. And it is just an extender that you can sometimes uh, do um, as a safety play. Mm -hmm. As uh, Gachiri, it has you have to target something, where if they pop it, then he's still in your hand. And... Hirari, uh, you, it just activates in hand, and even if they kill all your Attic Nisters that are on the field, it will still summon itself. Oh, right on. Okay. Makes sense. And for the Mathmic uh, portion of the monsters, we're running Triple Circular, one Sigma, and one Subtraction. Uh, you need to uh, run Subtraction. For some lines, is if you only open circular, it helps. It can actually lead to your full arrival board, but you need a subtraction as a search target, uh, just so you don't use your normal summon. And another application of subtraction is just being an additional extender. It can reduce the attack of opponent's monsters. So sometimes I've seen players like summon. A monster that cannot be destroyed by battle card effects and you can just add subtraction to reduce its attack and then you can just make a big access code and attack into that monster uh oh right on yeah twice for lethal um yeah uh oh and another thing that mm -hmm. is very important with subtraction is one circular threatens a double attacking access code talker by itself if you're on subtraction um so just through climbing with splash mage and uh transcode talker is that if you're uh, on if you're... sorry go ahead uh uh <laughs> Uh, what were you going to say? No, no, I'm sorry. I was just going to ask if it was subtraction specifically or if it could be addition as well. Uh, it can be addition. The only issue with addition is that often you, when you summon it, whatever you're linking away, will just the attack goes poof. Um, so addition as uh, subtraction can reduce monsters on your opponent's board just so mm. it's easier to clear them. And there is a very, very small application where uh, in when you're facing Math Mech, if they're on the Synchro, uh, he's unaffected by all card effects except for Math Mechs. Ah. So you can summon... Subtraction can reduce his attack points, and then he's a sh uh, very shitty towers. That's clever. I like that a lot. <laughs> uh, and then... Yeah, for the rest of the monsters, we're just on Triple Ash to play the sub game against Max C. Yep. And uh, it's also just very good against Branded. And then we're on Triple Max C, uh, just because it has applications versus almost every deck. <laughs> and the decks it doesn't have applications to against usually, like having the not that card card draw isn't going to matter. Right. Right. Um, yeah, and then for spells and traps, we are on, on no traps main deck, just only spells. Uh, we are on triple AI meet you. You can run this at two to three. Uh, I like three just because I do, I just absolutely hate bricking and I just mm -hmm. ever want that possibility. Um, you can full combo from a circular or an AI meet you. 
but both of those from as your alone starter means that you can't go for like a, a heat soul setup or like a heat soul on arrival mm -hmm. um you have to burn a splash mage to actually fully combo and then that prevents you from doing heat soul stuff gotcha but the yellow jelly bean red jelly bean or cyanet mining is just the full combo uh you're also on one Mathematic Spell and Trap, just Equation as Extension. So you can make the 6k um, Arrival Cybers or do the uh, double attacking Axis Code line from one circular. Mm -hmm. uh, we're on Triple Cosmic Cyclone. Uh, I fought I on Ladder for a week just seeing what the meta was. Mm -hmm. And I encountered Runic as every second game. So I thought everybody <laughs> was going to be on Runic, and then only six players out of 256 <laughs> were on Runic. Yeah, it's, uh, it's funny. When I was looking at all the different top decks, I noticed like everybody was playing Cosmic Cyclone. So it seems like everyone was ready for that Runic matchup that just was not there. <laughs> yeah. Um, I will say I think Cosmic was just very poor overall. There was a lot of games where it was like, if this was Feather Duster or Lightning Storm, this was the end of the game immediately. <laughs> but it being Cosmic uh, actually uh, lost me uh, one of the games in Swiss. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, and for other spells were just on double called by to deal with the max uh the maxi sub game mm -hmm. and cross out to help deal with the maxi sub game uh we were i chose forbidden droplet as the board breaker of choice i experimented with triple tack a book of eclipse and dark ruler no more uh there's decks like ad emancipator in the format that will just absolutely murder you out of the sun mm -hmm. even if you dark ruler them um, Book of Eclipse, it's really, really good, but it does nothing against Mathmech once they've already set up, because uh, all their stuff are Link Monsters, and Book of Eclipse does nothing. Makes sense, yeah. And uh, I did see there is quite a few decks just on triple infinite impermanence, but I think it's very poor choice this meta. Just because Mathmech, they summon the Link 1 Adagnister that contributes itself to negate a trap card. And they immediately do that in a lot of their setups, making mm -hmm. uh, the card just completely worthless. And a lot of the decks like uh, just Math Mechanic, Nister, Sword Soul, or Branded, a lot of the time a single Imperm won't do anything in the grand scheme of the board, because they can just play through it. Yeah, that definitely makes a lot of sense. I've had a lot of moments, because I tend to be on Imperm a lot myself, but I do feel this meta, especially, there have been just a lot of moments where it does not feel like enough, even with other disruption in your hand. Yeah, and then I am on one uh, Ignister AI land. Uh, I'll, some builds run uh, three and, like, terraforming, and I'm just on one just because a lot of time when I, and it's a huge reason why I'm not running Subtraction, uh, the Super Factorial line in the main deck, is that uh, you need every card in your hand to play through the boards that are three or four, in, like three interruptions and hand traps. Mm -hmm. And if you have a dead card in your hand, you're not going to be able to break the board. That's it. That's what ha happens a lot of the time, we're, unfortunately. And so... If you are running multiple copies of this and you draw into an AI land, then uh, you might be hooped. And because uh, how Attic Nisters work, you need all your zone, you you need all your main monster zones to be clear in order to combo with AI land. Mm -hmm. You can very often just start with the circular line, and they everybody tries to negate the circular line because. <laughs> They don't want a super factorial to hit the board, even if you're not running it. Right. And and it baits all the interaction, and then you can start, and you can just summon your one of your jelly beans to search, uh, Ignister AI land to do your main combo line. Uh, as for the extra deck, mm -hmm. uh, 
a, a lot of this is just universal among all um, Attic Mister builds. You need double Dark Infant to do the main combo. Yep. Uh, you need Cyber's Wicked to do the main combo. Mm -hmm. uh, Cy Cyber's Wicked has additional application versus Runic specifically. Uh, because you can Link Summon it. If you ever get two guys on board, just Link Summon it immediately. And they have to... Br you can then start summoning things in zones it points to, and they're protected by card effects. So they have to burn both their ne negate and their pop to get rid of Wicked. Uh, otherwise, you can just summon in zones it points to and climb to uh, an access code. Oh, right on. I didn't know that, actually. That's pretty rad. Uh, I'm on double Splash Mage. You could run one. Uh, I really like two just for the, the on turn three so you can OTK easier. Mm -hmm. And uh, Splash Mage often is a target a lot of people like to hit because a lot of people are in Ghost Spell and Haunted Mansion and then they see the Splash Mage and they uh, fire it off. Yep. Uh, you run Update Jammer just so you can OTK. Uh, Dark Templar, Attic Nister. Uh, you need for the main combo and uh it's it has actually two effects and you need to use its second effect if when this card destroys an opponent's monster by battle you can s revive a cybers mm -hmm. you actually um i unfortunately found this out later but you need to use that second effect to otk through if branded sets up two revives in the grave like masquerade and a louver need to use his second effect to actually OTK through that. Oh, I see. Uh, we're also on one Deco Talker Heat Soul. Uh, he's often just the backup plan if you have you were hand trapped into Oblivion mm. and you have two guys because then two guys make Splash Mage, Splash Mage make uh, Deco Talker Heat Soul. But if you have two guys and one extender in hand, uh, you can go, uh, you can make a setup with Transco Talker and uh, Deco Talker Heat Soul, and they're co linked so they can't be targeted as like a emergence at, if you just have a little bit. It's not super horrible. Because mm -hmm. then they have to commit to an access code to actually break your board. Right, right. Um, and then, yeah, we're on one access code talker. You can. It has come up some scenarios where you could run a second access code talker mm -hmm. just because uh, versus stall decks like runic or control decks, they will, it can sometimes get your access code and then the second one will come up to clean up the board, but it's very rare. Um, yeah, we are running the one arrival cybers uh, just for the end board boss monster. Uh, it's very important to make him 6k if you can, just because so many decks can't out a 6k. But if you, like, make him 5k, then a lot of decks can get to that 5k and out him. Mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're on one uh, Prime Mathmech Al, uh, Alan version, just uh, as one of the main uh, Mathmech starters, just any two level four, so then you can make him... Um, a circular or make him as part of the Attic Nister combo. Uh, we're run on one Wind Pegasus Attic Nister, uh, just because you summon him in the combo as additional protection. Because if they somehow manage to get a big access code and they attack over your rival, then you can shuffle their access code into the deck and they can't finish the OTK. Yep, yep, makes sense, yep. Um... Those are the 13 slots that are, like, universal among Attic Nister decks. Mm -hmm. uh, but for uh, tech slots, uh, I'm running Security Dragon. Uh, a lot of people run stuff like Link Spider to play under Nibiru, uh, in case they Nibiru your board. I'm running Security Dragon because you can do the same thing to remove get a token off your field. You just need a, a extender. But right. he also has another application of it lets you climb into an access code under Zombie World. Oh. Uh, just because if somebody I've seen some of the branded decks have incorporated a Zombie World setup, 
just to screw over the monotype meta that's like Sword Soul and Math Mech. But then you can actually climb if you have can if you have AI land and one of the jelly beans, you can climb into an Axis code and then pop itself to pop one of your well, you don't even have to pop itself, but pop uh pop, pop it so you can actually do your plays. Right on, yeah, and I did notice that the uh, branded decks that reached the finals, one of them was running that Zombie World package in the side deck, so it seemed like a very good call there. Yeah, and then, yeah, his uh, bounce effect does come up, but <laughs> um, there is, for this slot, you can also just run the big Firewall, OG Firewall Dragon, because mm -hmm. uh, it does have the bounce effect as well, and it can bounce... Uh, stuff in the graveyard if you need to OTK through Brandon. Uh, gotcha. But, but both both of them are good, but in order to make a firewall efficiently, you can make it as part of your uh, red jelly bean or yellow jelly bean as your starter. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, it's very vulnerable to interruption because then it's if they kaiju your arrival that would be pointing to the firewall it's like oh now firewall this is doing nothing oh. now. <laughs> yeah yeah um <laughs> uh, yeah and then the other uh tech slot i'm running light dragon attic mister i wasn't running it for a uh, a period of time mm -hmm. and after i added it in and tried to actively think about it it just comes up so often being able to eight negates and uh, interact with the opponent's board and give your stuff protection. And it's also another card very good in the runic matchup because it's another card they would have to burn their, their negate effect and their pop to get rid of it. Ah, I see, yep. Uh, so just being able to, versus runic, use circular to make Light Dragon add Ignister. Now they're... Now they're in a very bad situation, and if you can, if you have another starter like Picari or a Chi Chi, you can mm -hmm. then get uh, get uh, a Chiri into rotation. So now you can't really get over the board. All right, on makes sense. Um, and yeah, uh, for the side deck, uh, I'm running a small. Uh, math mech package if I'm guaranteed to go first. So we're running the Super Factorial, the Nabla, the Diameter, and the Laplacian. Just because like, these were would normally be stuff if you're going to, for the Super Factorial line, you'd be in the main deck. But mm -hmm. often it'd be like, oh, I have this Nabla in my hand and the Super Factorial. If one of these was any other card, I could have won the game, but they weren't. Right. Um, but, yeah, for the end setup, you can use Albert, you you just dump Nabla with a circul circular, mm -hmm. and then when you make, uh, you can use Alan Bershon to revive Nabla, and just Nabla tributes himself to get the diameter from deck. So then you have the, the uh, multiple interruption super factorial. Uh, for other stuff, I'm running Double Red Reboot. Uh, this card is extremely powerful, this meta, just because it's, if you're facing Runic, that you shut off their, like, there can only be one. Or if you're fighting, like, a trap deck, trap deck like Eldritch, mm -hmm. you just activate it once and then you win the game. <laughs> yep. And and we're on a, a second AI land. I'm just for going second. It was like the in theory of if they if I only draw Attic Mister portion of my deck, I want a higher chance of not being stopped by a single negation on my Dark Infant. Mm -hmm. uh, we were on Nib mostly as a crossout target um, that I could side in going first, just in the off chance. Like, if I know my opponent is on Nibiru, like, a man pan at, at Emancipator. Mm -hmm. um, I went with three Dark Ruler no more, just for matchups like at Emancipator or Flu, just because I need a way to eat some of the board, in case there was just, like, a very combo-heavy deck that I could not get over. Right, right. Uh, um... 
is because I've seen some Animancipator decks, they have a setup with Herald of Arclight, so then you can't even droplet any monsters from your hand, and that means um, they just negate it. Right. Uh, yeah, and then I was on one Ghost Spell and one Infinite Impermanence, more of the just one, one of cross-out targets. Uh, and then I was on Feather Dust or Lightning Storm in case there was like a back row deck I needed to decide for. Uh, in in the future, a huge, huge uh, oversight I completely forgot about mm -hmm. uh, for side decking is uh, it's a hundred percent. You can there's a searchable floodgate in Adagnister in AIQ. Which if you control an Adagnister, each player can only link summon once per turn. Oh, and then, I see. yeah, and it's kind of like Imperial Order, where you can just the old version, where you can choose to not pay its costs during the standby phase and just get rid of it. Oh, right on. Okay. Yeah, so it it would be a hundred percent worth running versus like Mathmech or, uh, I mean, other Adagnister decks or Ad Emancipator to just shut completely shut off their turn because it's just a searchable floodgate. Because, uh, like, Mathmech can search out floodgates, but they have to commit to a four material Alimbertian where, mm -hmm. you know, your single normal summon can search out the floodgate. Yeah, it definitely seems easier that way. Uh, uh, yeah, that is it from the main and side deck. Right on, right on. So this was the build you took to the tournament, but I understand that you also had an updated build, one that you uh, kind of came up with after the fact. Um, so I can actually switch right over to that here, and we can take a look at that. It's going to be on Dueling Book here. So um, yeah, once again, I'll give you the floor if you want to talk about some of the, the differences and why you think this, is the, uh, this would be an improved build. Yeah. Currently, this is what I'm trying to use in Ladder, uh, and so far it's been working wonderfully in testing. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the times, uh, you need like a Nibiru to beat some of the stronger combo decks of the meta, just because they will get a setup where uh, it, it kind of functions in the same way as a Droplet would, just because a lot of the time they don't get a Negate into their combo, and if you nib them mid-combo, mm -hmm. they're just screwed. And another thing is, if you set up, because your Arrival Cyverse is unaffected, you can still, like, Nibiru and your Arrival Cyverse just is there chilling on the board. <laughs> so if they commit to, like, a big line to out your Arrival, it's just another card, too. Because if they draw called by, they can, re you know, remove remove your Danmari from Grave and then try and kill you that way. Mm -hmm. um, I'm on double Ghost Spell and Haunted Mansion main just to help out with the Super Factorial um, as well as Max C game, just so you can Ghost Spell, a Called By, or hit Super Factorial, or hit like Branded in Red. Yep. Just, just an all all around uh, safety net. And then I moved Red Reboot to the main. Mm -hmm. uh, just in just a best of one format, you need the I win button versus the Floodgate decks. And where if you're running a single Cosmic, it's sometimes they have double Floodgates. And it's like, well, I guess I lose. Or uh, another thing that just comes up is the. If you're running like a Feather Duster versus Runic, it won't. Um, they just they just summon their level two, and Feather Duster doesn't accomplish anything. Where right as yeah, whereas Red Reboot is just a hard a hard answer for any floodgates because you can as long as you draw your two starters, you can usually OTK a Runic player and just play through their all their interaction. Uh, but if they flip up a there can only be one, it's like, well, okay, I, <laughs> I am not winning this game. <laughs> Fair enough. So definitely liking that more than Cosmic Cyclone, for sure, then. Yeah. And the other change I'm currently testing with, I'm, I'm not sure if it's fully, uh, if it's good, if it's fully good or not. I think it is good, but it is Small World mm -hmm. over Cynet Mining. 
Uh, just because Small World, it doesn't banish on activation. So if they ash your Cyanet Mining, you just went Nig too. But if they ash your Small World, then you're still even on advantage. And Small World can search some of the hand traps. It is just a little bit more... You can, Unfortunately, it's a bit harder to search Nibiru because... Kari, it has the same st defense stat as Nibiru, so you uh, have to actually banish a circular in order to get a Nibiru into rotation. But it is, when you're do just doing a heat soul setup, it is awesome to like draw into a small world and then be like, aha, now you can search Maxi because a Chi <laughs> is level 2. That's always fun. Yeah, right uh, on. Yeah, or uh... Gachiri is zero attack, so any Cyverse banish Gachiri, you can then add your Ash or your Ghost Spell. In one round in Swiss, mm -hmm. I got comp I got owned by a Mathmic player. They were going first. I was like, okay, I have Maxi. I'll just respond to Circular. And they activate Small World. It's like, okay, whatever. Mm -hmm. And then they uh, added Ash, and uh, I lost that game. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. uh. Yeah, I was actually going to ask, I was a bit curious about how your Swiss rounds went, um, if you don't mind getting into those a bit. I know you, you mentioned earlier that you did end up losing a game because of uh, Cosmic Cyclone. Was it specifically because of the paying a thousand life points? No. Uh, I, I never went to time. I was very careful to uh, play around it. I mm -hmm. I just absolutely despise hating in time. I think it was <laughs> a... I think there was either a Mathmic or an Agent Mister player at, in the first three rounds that MBT had on stream, and uh, they had lost in time, but just because they took too much damage with Heat Soul, uh, and, like they were in a they were in a winning board state, but it was like, oh no, he yeah. should have Heat Soul that many times. Yeah, we're gonna win. <laughs> that'd do it. Uh, but yeah, for the run, uh, round one was versus Numeron. Uh, I went first. Um, but I opened no way to combo, which is unfortunately like a 4% chance to happen. But like, <laughs> uh, if I don't have any monsters on board, they can't, uh, OTK me, <laughs> so... uh, unless they draw a limiter. So I guess it's like, you know, a double-edged sword. <laughs> it kind of uh, works out for you. Yeah. And then I made a 80, you can, I made a rival. And use that to make a 8300 axis code. That way they couldn't, <laughs> like, uh, use Numeron wall on, like, the first axis code attack. Right, right. But uh, Numeron is a very good matchup for you because uh, if you make the big guy, uh, it is very hard for them to out. And if you have, like, a smaller dude they're trying to OTK you through, a mm -hmm. Chi-Chi's graveyard effect just pops your Cybers, so they can't actually... It it triggers at the start of the damage step, so all the Numerons cannot get their attack increase. Yeah, that's actually... So, I think the one time I've personally used that Chi-Chi's effect was in that exact scenario against Numeron, so... Yeah, I can attest to that as well. <laughs> yeah, so it it's... Like, in order for Numeron to kill you, they have to have, like, Kaiju plus a limiter removal. Uh, and I think it's, like, two limiter removals. Or, like, because it is just, like, such a difficult time to OTK with, like, stuff like Wind Pegasus, if you have that. Right, yeah. Um, then round two was versus Dragon Link. Uh, I went second. Uh, I had an Ash for their Paw Desires. They did triple tack me, mm -hmm. uh, but I still had two starters, and I was just able to OTK through the standard Dragon Link board. Nice, right on. Uh, then round three was versus Mathmech. I won the die roll, went first. They did out my arrival, but I was just able to OTK them and make uh, unaffected access code, so even if they had Imperm. <laughs> uh, a huge thing with, like, even if they, ma for Mathmic is, they can out an arrival, but even if they do, mm -hmm. they waste so much resources, and then the Wind Pegasus clears their board. Right. <laughs> uh, round four, I was facing Scareclaw, and oh, they wow. went first, 
but um, they just couldn't put up a very big board through an Ash Blossom mm. and just um, just OTK them. And round five, I uh, went versus Branded and just went first, and they just can't do a thing when when you do the full <laughs> combo going first, just because six K access code is just I mean not access code but arrival is just in, inevitable. They just can't event they'll eventually die to it. Like <laughs> they could get a starving venom out, but that's really weak to interaction. Right, right. Uh then round six I lost versus Sword Soul. Uh I was going second mm -hmm. and I drew I think I drew Sinet mining and three cards I don't want to see in my hand, like mm. Denmari, Ichiri, and another search target. And I think, oh yeah, I think I had the field spell. And it was, uh, it was just, I, I signed it mining, and they ashed it, and I was like, okay, that's the end. Of the <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, and then round seven, I just won the sword soul uh they were going second and they had max c but i actually had my starters this time mm. and just otk them through max c nice because you just make your unaffected guy and then it's like okay even if you have imperm you know uh right the only thing they can do is draw their one of nibiru because a lot of the time like even if they draw into like Ash, Ghost Spell, and another Hand Trap, a lot of the time, like Effect Veiler, you can still, if you have the double starter, you can play through that and still OTK them. Mm -hmm. uh, then round eight, I lost versus Math Mech, and that's when they did the Small World play to uh, add Ash yeah. and <laughs> screw over a Max C. And then they set three back row. Oof. And it was, I had Cosmic in hand. And um, I had to hit the Super Factorial or they're called by in <laughs> order to play through their board. Because then they have to fire the Super Factorial early and mm -hmm. I can actually play through it. And I hit their Cosmic. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so... Yeah, like, had Cosmic just been Feather Duster, Lightning Storm, or Red Reboot, like, yeah, the game the game was over. Oh, one thing I did not talk about Red Reboot. Sorry for a side tangent. No, yeah, go right ahead. But, uh, Red Reboot is especially dumb in Ad Attic Mister, because if you Red Reboot an Imperm, for instance, and mm -hmm. they set two back row, you're still making Wind Pegasus as part of your main combo in every combo. Oh. So Wind Pegasus <laughs> will pop the cards they set. So that... it doesn't even, it has no downside aside from the life points. That's so gross. <laughs> it's just giving them false hope at that point. <laughs> it's pretty good. Yeah. And then for Top Cut, uh, round one was versus Sub Terror. Um, they were playing like a Floodgate variant. So yeah, they didn't I saw really that. Have... They didn't have any hand traps, and mm. I won the die roll, so just ah. went first, nothing they could do. And then game two, it was Drew Red Reboot, nothing they could do. <laughs> uh, top eight was versus uh, Ad Emancipator, and this is one of the... If there's, like, two decks in the meta, I'd have to pick out that are, like, really good versus mine. It'd be Ad Emancipator and Blue. Blue, just because they run the main deck Book of Moons, and yep. as, soon, as soon as your stuff get face down your AI land does nothing, and it's like, oh no. Yeah. <laughs> and Ad Emancipator, just because a lot of them are on the Underworld Goddess, uh, just because they got, I guess they got tired of losing to stuff on the Arrival Cybers. <laughs> so they turned and, to the White Woman. <laughs> yeah. So they went first. Uh, they didn't have a crazy board, if I recall, but I... I think I had one starter, and it just got negated, and I lost. Mm -hmm. Game two, I sided in Super Factorial, and they just could not play through a viable Super Factorial. Mm. And then game three, <laughs> it was just kind of like a back and forth. Uh, oh, I eventually won, but... <laughs> we all saw game three. <laughs> we all yeah. saw game three. That was a... Uh... That was very good. I have to congratulate you again on that game. I was uh, was definitely at the literal edge of my seat while I was watching it. 
Yeah, I did. Uh, I, I was starting to run out of gas at top eight, but like, um, I, I did make some misplays in that game, but I don't think they, in the grand scheme of things, they wouldn't have changed in the sense of like, I could have made the Heat Soul unaffected, which would have made his misplay in top eight, like in that game, not matter. Mm -hmm. But. Yeah, but yeah, it was a really fun game. I think we we're all collectively like way too hyped on you bouncing the block dragon with security dragon to even notice like <laughs> anything that might have been a misplay there. It was uh, like I said, it was very hype. It was a very good game. Yeah, and then in top four, I I lost to uh, the branded. Uh, he's on main deck kaiju's, which is a very very <laughs> yeah. good medical. <medical-y> <laughs> Yeah, that was uh, the end up winning, if I recall correctly. Yes. Uh, and it's just so funny that, like, you know, you can run the light and dark kaijus and <laughs> <laughs> still fusion summon with them. Uh, yeah, and so, like, if I was on Super Factorial, like, or I might have had a better matchup versus kaijus, but mm -hmm. then you're running the risk of bricks. But I, I forget... Yeah, game one I won. I forget how it went. Game two, uh, he set up Ma uh, Masquerade Dragon, which is very powerful mm -hmm. versus Attic Mister yeah. because you can't <laughs> you can't just go through your whole combo Dark Templar line and then pop it. You have to pop <laughs> it be before you do your full combo, or else right. you will you will die. And you can play through Double Tax Man, but. If they have, like, double tax man plus um, interruptions, then it's going to be a very hard time. Yeah. And one thing I just never encountered in ladder, I encountered, like, masquerade and grave. And usually what I do is make an 8200 access code, attack and attack mm -hmm. uh, the double attacking one. So then when they revive it, attack over the attack for lethal. But uh, he got a loop. A Luber and a uh, Masquerade and Grave, and I didn't uh, realize. Uh, I never encountered that before. I was like, "Oh no! I, I I've already committed to this line, oh. and now he's got two revives." Um, I did. So, if you're on Firewall or Dark Fluid, mm. uh, you can. It's not an issue, but for this build of Attic Mister, um. You need to use the second effect of Dark Templar to actually revive uh, an Attic Mister Engrave to actually OTK through that. So you can actually make an unaffected Dark Templar, a double attacking access code, and have Light Dragon Attic Mister in the grave. Oh, and then you just okay. get a Jelly Bean and attack, um, regardless of the attack or order. Mm -hmm. uh, with like access code, if they revive first or let let an attack go through, then revive. Mm -hmm. You can have Dark Templar run over a Luber. It's unaffected, so they can't do anything. It revives Light Dragon at Ignister. Uh, you can attack with Light Dragon, attack with a Jelly Bean, then Light Dragon at Ignister triggers from another Cypher dealing battle damage, and then revive for Transcode or Pegasus in the grave. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, so it's just a very, very weird line. Like, two effects I've never used before. But. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, the first time you you talked about Dark Templar having a second effect, I definitely had that moment where I was like, it does? <laughs> yeah, it is very, very... Like, it's very strange that that would come up. But, like, if you're on just regular Firewall Dragon, then you wouldn't have to worry about that, just because then you can bounce things in the grave. Gotcha, gotcha. It seems like, though, the extra deck might be a bit tight to fit that in a lot of the time. Yeah, it is. It is Like, there's only really two flex slots, and it's it's kind of like, what do you want to play play around or play for? Right. Because, like, a lot of people love running Link Spider, but I'm just like, I don't want to lose to Zombie World. <laughs> there's too many <laughs> people fair. running Zombie World. <laughs> That's definitely fair. <laughs> Ah, all right. Well, I think that's about um, all the questions that I had for you. I didn't know if you had any uh, final comments, anything you want to plug. Uh, the floor is yours for that. Uh, I guess maybe final 
comments about the deck is I feel it's going to be very good going into the the current metagame, mm -hmm. and I still think it'll be playable when sprites come out. I would just be be more. Uh, I I would lean more towards um, like hand traps, uh, like Nibiru, just because a lot of people are starting to play more heavy combos. Where even if you draw a board breaker, they will negate your first board breaker, so right. you need a second one. Gotcha, and makes that. Sense. But uh, yeah, for plugging, I mean, I have Twitter, I guess. I just I. Um, if you Google, I wish I was dead at Twitter, you'll probably find it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, I'll I make get... sure to throw a link in the uh, description there for anyone who's interested. Yeah. Uh, I guess I made one video on my YouTube channel, like, what, two years ago? <laughs> <laughs> if, if, you want me to, if you want me to link your channel, I'm more than happy to. Anything anything you want me to throw in that description, I will. Uh, it's, it's probably good. <laughs> I mean, I, I might make some videos when I'm out of like full-time school but yeah there's no I, I I am not that I am a math student I have no time for that <laughs> fair enough fair enough well thank you so so much uh, for coming onto the channel for this interview like I said I was very eager to talk to you uh, as soon as I saw that uh, that gameplay so thank you again very much for coming on well, th uh, thank you very much for having me. I appreciate uh, uh, appreciate it very much for your valuable time. Yeah, of course, totally. All right, so with that, I think, yeah, I think we are good to go. Let's go ahead and move on now to the outro. All right, everybody, thank you so much for watching all the way to the very end of the video like this. That means a whole lot to me, uh, not just personally, but it's also a great way of supporting the channel as well. If you're interested in supporting the channel in other means, uh, you can of course feel free to comment and or subscribe right here on YouTube. Uh, I'm always looking to the comments section. Uh, you guys leave some pretty awesome feedback uh, as far as like constructive criticism goes when it comes to deck building, gameplay, channel content, all that stuff. So feel free to leave your opinion down there. I will be sure to take a look at that there. Uh, and then subscribing is going to be the best way to get notifications of when these videos drop. That does happen every day, by the way, so if you're looking for daily Master Duel content, you've come to the right place. And there are more places where you can get some daily Master Duel content. If you check out the description below, follow the top link over to my Patreon page. Uh, there, for just 5 bucks a month, which is as much as you pay for a booster pack, uh, you'll find a lot more value than a pack full of filler over there. We've got some previews for content upcoming here on the channel. We've got some exclusive games uh, that are only posted over on Patreon over there. We've got some Q&As, and then you can also have your name featured in this lovely credit sequence where um, I thank all of the people who are uh, helping contribute over there on Patreon. Uh, it's a huge support to the channel, and it really means a lot as well. So thank you everyone who is donating uh, that is featured here on screen. And again, um, you know, it's not just a pure donation. You do get some more daily Master Duel content over there just for being a part of the Patreon. But I think that's about all the time that I have for today's video. Once again, I just want to thank you so, so very much for sticking all the way to the end of the video. Again, it just means a lot, as I do um, put a decent amount of work into getting these videos out every single day. But that's about all the time that I've got for now. So without further ado, this is Xlex. I'm signing out, and I hope you have a fantastic day.